Hi everyone, it's Emmanuel here. As we approach Christmas time, um, I don't know what your thoughts are because especially with, um, or for, for example myself living in North America, um, I think Christmas is a time where it's highly commercialized, okay? Because um, Christmas uh, is a day where we celebrate the birth of Jesus, that he came on earth. Now, I understand that December 25th is most likely not the day that Jesus was born. And I do understand that uh, the holiday Christmas have its pagan roots. Okay, but, you know, as an aside, people who say that, usually they'll try to, you know, authenticate themselves or saying, oh, you know, since, you know, Christmas is a pagan holiday and we support it and we celebrate it. So things like Halloween, which has pagan roots, it's okay to do it. Right, and I just want to mention in passing, okay? You gotta understand, Halloween and Christmas are very different uh, days of celebration. Halloween celebrates the, the dead, okay? It, it, you know, you go out there, the kids see it, you know, it's all about the skeletons, the spiders crawling everywhere, demonic looking things. It's just like what I talked about in the Bible, like hellish stuff, all right? But Christmas is a day where most people, or at least originally, or, or many people today, look at it as a day, especially Christians and believers, look at it as a day remembering uh, where Jesus came on earth for redemption of mankind. So the spirit and the intention behind the two holidays, whether they have pagan roots or not, doesn't matter because um, in Christmas we're celebrating the birth of Jesus. Now we can celebrate some other time. You know, is Easter the same? Easter the same thing, right? So. I think sometimes when we look at these things, just don't get into all the arguments. Jesus is always about the spirit of the law, whereas the Pharisees and, and, and the Sadducees, all those people, they're like in the letter of the law. You know, you're gonna do, keep this, you know, like, and they think they have, you know, they, they get into all this stuff, but guys, just think about this for a second. Okay, push that thing aside. Christmas, okay, we can celebrate any, obviously Jesus came at a certain day. 365 days a year, he must have come on a certain day, okay? We don't know which day it is, but on that day, we celebrate that he came on earth. That's what Christmas is about. Whether it should be December, January, February, March, April, you know, doesn't matter. He came here for a reason, and we're celebrating it because of that. And that is the season to be jolly. Fa la 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 la, okay? Goes a carol. Okay, the season is not to be jolly and happy because, you know, we have presents on Boxing Day. I've decided to talk to my wife, <laughs> actually, well, I mean, it's for a while now, that um, I'm definitely not going to tell my kids about Santa. Okay, I'm going to tell them this is a straight lie <laughs> that people made up. Santa's not going to climb from the roof and give you presents, you know, and, and from the chimney and hang, hang your, you know, whatever those things you call the stockings or something. Um, I, I know, you're saying, Emmanuel, come on, it's just like, you know, kids fun, right? Well, you know what, I'm just telling you personally, that's, that's what I, I'm doing, okay? Because I don't want to, I mean, I'm not going to tell my child a lie saying, you know, Santa's going to crawl down and give them their wish list, and, you know, if you're good and all this stuff. No, I'm going to tell them straight out, hey, Christmas is about celebrating Jesus. We don't know, probably it's not the day on December 25th, but it doesn't matter, it's the day that we celebrate it, Right? Just like when you have like a high school reunion, right? Sometimes or, or some type of reunion, you pick a date. Doesn't mean that that was the actual date when you guys graduated and whatever. It's the day that we celebrate the purpose of that day. It's very important to understand that because sometimes people drag you aside on certain different things. But what I want to examine with you during this Christmas season is for you and I, especially those who live in North America or the, uh, the more Western, westernized world, when Christmas is commercialized with buying, buying, just like Easter too, you know, it's about Easter eggs and bunnies, it's nothing to do with that, <laughs> okay? You know, for years, growing up in high school and different years, I would get sucked into that thing where, you know, Boxing Day, man, you know, I gotta go and buy some cheap stuff, you know, awesome deals, and I don't even need them. Right? Ended up just having to like either like give it away or something. I mean, with the tags on it, that's, it makes no sense, guys. Just because something is cheap doesn't mean you gotta go buy it, right? 
And I think that this Christmas season, may you and I reflect on what Jesus told us in Matthew chapter 6, because this is a very good time to practice what He told us. In Matthew chapter 6, verse 19 to 21, Jesus says, Do not, okay, a commandment, do not lay up for yourselves treasures on earth, where moth and rust destroy, and where thieves break in and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust destroys, and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Where is your treasure today? Where is my treasure today? Are we going to think about that? Is our treasures, or our treasures, the you know countless collections that we have, or a certain thing, or we want to stock up, whatever it is, you you know what it is. You know, I've heard of testimonies of how, you know, people were in the church service and God was working in the hearts of these teens, these youth. You know, this youth won a pair of this sports, I think it was Nike or some type of shoes, brand new, laid at the altar, and gave it to God. Renouncing, you know, I'm, obviously I'm inferring this, re- renouncing their ties to materialism. And this wasn't even related to Christmas. But it gets us thinking, right? Because you know that while um, many people today are looking at Christmas in a commercialized way, you know that there's you know, maybe half around on the other side of the globe, there are children, widows and orphans and people, families who have nothing to celebrate about because they're living on $1 a day, working in the heat of the day for 10, 12 hours, making $1. And child labor, children being exploited, chained to factories to work, sexual uh, trafficking, exploitation of young and old uh, or, or, or grown ups. I mean, it has to get us thinking, right? Don't go with the, the what do you call it, the flow of what the society is trying to push, you know? That, you know, just getting all this stuff is going to make you happy. And I know some of you may say, you know, well, maybe, you know, not even just for yourself, but maybe make a pact or an agreement with your families or close ones. Now, I understand you can't do this for people who are not too close. They'll misunderstand you. They'll misjudge you and things like that. For example, I'll give you an example. My sister and I have decided, okay, well, because my sister's email signature is that uh, is living simply so others can simply live. And I'm like, that's awesome, right? Living simply so others can simply live. Meaning that we can use our excess, whatever God has given us, to those who are truly in need, right? And so my sister and I decided, hey, we back email back and forth and we talked about this in person. There's no need to give each one another, you know, extravagant birthday gifts. You know, we'll tell each other which organization or, or uh, Christian or whatever, a charity that we believe in. You know, we have different ones. That's fine. And we'll just give unto that if that's what we want. That, you know, or, you know, just something small value, but it has meaning. It doesn't matter. Right? It's not about the presents or the gifts. You know what I mean? So maybe this Christmas, you can talk to your family. You can talk to you. Um, Now understand, you know, like, think about, pray about this and see who you can do this with. People who are close to you, if you explain it to them, you you tell them, hey, I don't want to get caught in this commercialism. You know, I want to be able to use the money that I was going to spend on Boxing Day, you know, by helping that child overseas who don't even have food to eat. 
I want to help that, you know, those missionaries who are taking the Gospels to, like, the mountains and, like, you know, don't even have a coat to wear. You know, I want to do something that has an eternal significance. I want to obey what Jesus says to not lay up treasures on earth, but lay up treasures in heaven. Because one day I'm going, to, I'm going to see them, and that day is very fast approaching. By looking at all the news and all, I mean, you can't talk, you can't say this to your more distant relatives and things like that. So, yeah, to a certain extent, you have to buy a present. You do have to do the things of life. Yeah, I understand that. Even, you know, I understand that. You know, I got to do it too. I don't like to do it. In my understanding, it's a waste of money <laughs> to buy presents. But you know what? You don't want to lose a testimony as a Christian, especially for people who, you know, don't know Jesus. They, you know, they think, well, you're rude and you go to these family gatherings. You don't bring things, things like that. I understand, okay? So you do your best to bear a good testimony. But I'm saying wherever possible, think about it in this Christmas. The whole intention, the whole motive is about celebrating the birth of Jesus. What is there to celebrate about? What is there to celebrate about? It's about the Son of the living God humbling Himself, not considering Himself to be equal with God. Okay? That's what in Philippians, that's what it tells us in the Bible. But He humbled Himself on earth to be born in a manger. Lived for 30 years, not known, in humility, when He was growing in the favor and the statue, in the presence of God. God launched him in ministry for about three and a half years and then died for humanity. And, then, and, and uh, very shortly before he was crucified, he took off his robe, Jesus, wrapped around this little, uh, what would you call it, thing where it just basically symbolized what a servant would do, goes around the table and washes each one of the disciples' feet. And he says, what I'm doing right now, you don't know what I'm doing, but later on you will. And later he explains to them, you call me teacher. You can read all this in, in the Gospel of John. Okay? He says, you call me teacher and rightfully so. But if you calling me teacher will see me washing your feet, you ought to do the same thing to one another. Because the kingdom of heaven is that he who wants to be first will be last, and he who, wants to be, and, and he who is last will be first. Humility. Contentment. Perspective of the eternal things of God, not my will, but your will. Now, I know sometimes it's easier said than done, but may it be something that not only we're challenged with, but something that we're actually going to put into practice and pray through it. God, help me. Not just in Christmas season, but 365 days around the year. Help me not to live in luxury. Help me not to live, you know, you know like take care of families, do your duties. Okay, I'm not telling you to live in the street. Do what you need to do, but... Be content. First Timothy chapter 6, God, For godliness with contentment is great gain. For we brought nothing to the world, we will bring nothing out. For those who, wanted this, those who desire to be rich fall into a snare, into a trap, and pierce themselves with many sorrows. Right? There's a never-ending desire for money, and, and a lust for money. Lust is not only sexual. It's, it's a very big temptation, for, especially for males, lust. Okay, that's the thing that we got to uh, definitely overcome and tackle in the name of Jesus, of the blood of Jesus, and the power of the Holy Spirit. But there's also lust of other things. Lust of the eyes, lust of the flesh, lust for money, lust for power. I've talked to many people, okay? I've talked, well, maybe not many, but I've talked to quite a few people, okay, who have money. They're wealthy, but they're not, uh, at some point in their lives, they're not satisfied. Even... Look at the celebrities. They talk about this, right? There's something that money absolutely can't buy. I think anyone figures that out. I mean, health. Recently, I was reading this uh, Facebook post about this, um, I think, cosmetic surgeon. Forgot his name. It's a 40 year old Chinese doctor. His name is, uh, I don't remember his first name, but his last name is Teal. Dr. Teal, I think. Um, but I can find the link. Basically, he died at the age of 40 to cancer. And before he died, okay, he went to different places, tried to tell people 
about what he learned throughout this whole ex- like ex- experience in terms of about life. He was giving this uh, sp- he was giving a speech which later tran- was transcribed and posted on Facebook. This speech was was given to a bunch of uh, I think students who will be dentists, medical professionals soon. And he says, guys, I know many of you are going to be wealthy and, and making a lot of money soon. I've been there, I've done that, and it's very long. Okay, I'm just going to briefly summarize it. He went into med school. He did, you know, general practice. And later on, he, he found that, you know, there's more money being a specialist doing cosmetic, you know, stuff. You know, like, you know, just throughout the body, right? People want a, a bigger nose, you know. Uh, you know, alter the chest, alter the, you know, whatever. People make a lot of money doing that. And that's why he went in there. He says in the first year, it got so successful. He hired four or five doctors. First year, he already made over a million dollars. Okay, he goes to family gatherings. He'll flash his uh, Ferrari, nice cars. But in hindsight, he says nobody liked him. He thought people were going to give him approval, but people only hated him. Because while others are struggling to make their ends meet, he's like, you know, showing off all the stuff. He thought he'll find joy there. He didn't. He always wanted to make more money. There's no end. You'll find it is such an irony that some of the most content people that I met sometimes are the poor. Different nations, you know, like those who, you know, like, oh, I thank the Lord. Now that, you know, I thank the Lord that He provided for me this and that and, and all this. And, and yet, some of the most wealthiest people, they're not content. They're not happy. They're not satisfied because of an ongoing lust for power, fame, money, anything else. And so when this doctor was giving a speech, he's saying, guys, I've learned that I need to turn my life back to Jesus. Turn my life back to God. Because at the end of the day, money can buy a lot of things in life, especially he was experiencing it. Health. So, I think his, I think his purpose is to tell the students, the medical students there, for dentists, I think, Make sure your priorities are correct, right? There's absolutely, and he says, there's absolutely nothing wrong to being wealthy. And I agree to a certain extent, okay? There's nothing wrong. I honestly, I'd rather like hundreds of millions of Christians are millionaires than for heathens. Why? Because if true Christians who love God are millionaires, they'll give into the work of God. They'll live as content as possible. And I've met people like that. They'll, they'll give into the work of God. They'll, they'll, they'll do the things that God called them to take care of the widows and orphans, you know, and, and take the gospel to where people can take them. So there's nothing wrong to want to be successful, okay? If you really want to honor God with what He blessed you with to do His work, there's nothing wrong. If you're content, you know, many people are like that. But there is a problem when... Our motives are, are, are messed up. Our values are messed up. You see, especially in, in, when our society is pushing all this stuff to us with sex appeal, with uh, materialism. You can't walk through the mall, especially well, I'm always talking in a North American context. You can't walk past the mall now without seeing, you know, everything is trying to get at you at the sex appeal. Everything is trying to get you to buy more, spend more. And, you know, you will look more successful like that person. Guys, think about, pray this in this season and ask God, God, where can I be different this Christmas and from now on? Where can I be different from now on? Not just in Christmas, but every day of my life. Where can I touch another person's life? Okay, I was talking a lot about, you know, you know like the orphans and stuff like that, but, you know, maybe God you to help your family. Maybe God wants you to help your, I don't know, your relatives, your close ones, whatever, whoever He puts in your path, whoever He puts in, in your heart that He gives you peace. Many people who need help then to spend that money on, on vanity. And it's not just about money too, it's about your time. 
your effort, your resources, your home. Right? Why did God give you what He gave you? Can you use that to God's glory? Can you use that to touch a person's life so that in all of eternity they can say, wow, thank you. You know, for taking me into your home and I don't have a place to live. Thank you for helping me out when you know I need help. Thank you for praying for me when I was sick. Thank you for clothing me when I had nothing to wear. That's what Jesus talked about in Matthew chapter 25. What can you and I do in this Christmas season? To turn this thing around. Now I understand the general media, the general public is still going to go after this. But if you truly love Jesus, if you are a born again believer, we are called to be set apart. Set apart. A holy nation, chosen generation by the Lord Jesus Christ to do His will on earth. So may you and I remember this scripture that Jesus told us, Do not lay up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust destroys and where thieves do not break in and steal for where your treasure is there your heart will be also. Heavenly Father, I pray in the name of Jesus right now that you reveal to us, to the person who's watching this video and to myself, where our treasure is. God, I pray that our treasures will not be found in the things of this life, in the cares of the world, in the, in the possessions of what people call to be successful, God. But I pray that especially during this Christmas season when we're thinking about your birth, Jesus, what you came to do for us, doesn't matter whether it's the actual day that you were born in that day, December 25th, but it's the day that we think about and celebrate that you could come in on earth. And especially when we think about your humility, when we think about that you came with nothing, you emptied yourself, help us live this life in a similar fashion to humble ourselves, to be content, to be broken before you, to empty ourselves with all the excess so that we can, we can be an open vessel to you, Lord God. Show us what we can do this Christmas. Show us who we can help. Show us who is praying to you for help and that we can be the helping hand to them in your name, Jesus. Help us understand that all the peripherals in this life is what Solomon called vanity. Help us not to chase the things, the vanity of this life over and over again because when we shed this body, when we enter into the spirit realm, when we enter into eternity, nothing else matters other than whether we have truly repented and trusted in you and have obeyed you in this life. So God, I pray, transform us anew. Fill us with your fire, Holy Spirit, always. And those who have not been baptized and received the complete baptism of filling the Holy Spirit now in Jesus' name, fill them now with your holy fire, God. Baptize them in the Holy Spirit, as you said, Jesus. And help us live pleasing to you, pursuing holiness, living a repentant life, fighting the good fight of faith until you come back, Jesus. May we be useful for the kingdom of God. May we always keep an eternal perspective for the things of your kingdom, God. We give you praise and honor and glory. We thank you for your sacrifice, Jesus. Help us live pleasing to you and imitate the way you live as when you were on earth. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Born to raise the sons of earth, born to give.